Hey everybody, this is Anthony with you, the Italian Bible-believing Jew, and welcome back to a new series entitled, Refuting Christmas. <gasps> oh no, how dare you! I can't believe this! Yes, I am actually going to refute this pagan, evil, unscriptural, ungodly holiday. Strange, isn't it? How when somebody stands for the truth, they get scolded, made fun of, and ridiculed, especially by professing fake Christians. You're probably thinking, what is so bad about Christmas? I'm glad you asked, because this is going to be a long series, and I'm going to refute Christmas scripturally and logically. You see, the Bible's written in a logical manner, and this video is entitled, No Holidays of the World. Now, mainly we're going to focus on Christmas. It's going to be refuted by Scripture. And if you're one of those people that is clinging to the traditions of man, I guarantee you it's going to hurt your feelings, crush your pride, and cut you to the heart. Because the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. So stay tuned for this first video. No Holidays of the World. People ask me why I don't celebrate most of the holidays today. The main one I'll address for this discussion is Christmas. Now, I'm pretty sure I can provide a lot of scripture, and I probably already will later on in the series. But some people are not satisfied with scripture for some reason. Don't know why, the scripture is supposed to be the final authority, right? So why not use flawless logical reasoning? to disprove them, these reasons that they give for celebrating Christmas. I mean, it's not a coincidence that Christ used logic more than any other method of teaching of Scripture itself. Christ himself also taught logical sense. See the Scriptures below. Not to be deliberately rude or anything, but the modern word for logic is, duh. Now, if you were ignorant of what I'm about to discuss, I guarantee you, like I said in the intro, this will cut you to the heart. See Hebrews 4.12. But if you repent and turn from your ways, God will have mercy on you. See Isaiah 55.7. Let's begin with the first reason. One of the first reasons I reject these stupid times of the year is the tendency to be two-faced towards people. You've seen these people, I'm sure which make up about 90% of Americans, probably 95%. Since the Bible has all the answers, we must let it speak for itself. God is very much against this constant act of being two-faced. See these scriptures given below. Let me just tell you up front, those of you who celebrate this pagan holiday, if you don't like me, don't pretend that you do. If you don't talk to me throughout the year, do me a favor and don't you dare send me a card. I will just tear it up and throw it into the trash. Into the trash can it goes. People have the bad habit of thinking, Well, this is just that time of year, and I have to be nice to the person I can't stand, so I'll just get along with him this one time. Let me tell you something. If I knew you thought that way about me, I wouldn't go to the gathering. I don't like most people anyhow. But since I'm distant with just about 98% of people, that makes it much easier for me to be civil, not fake or pretending, with all people. So, it's also easier to love my enemies, as Christ taught, which is the same as civility, just a synonym for the word love. See Matthew 5, 44-45. Love is an action, not a feeling. The second reason is the lying to children. Now, the first point is also lying, being two-faced, but this is the special edition, quote-unquote, of lying on sale every year in most stores. Also see these scriptures. A lot of scripture, isn't it? Because the Bible is the final authority. Not your opinion, or your pastors, or your parents, 
or your lying Sunday school teacher, or Torah-keeping teacher, the Bible is a final authority. Keep that in mind. Now, just in case anyone thinks bearing false witness isn't the same as lying, read the following scriptures. Proverbs 6.19, 14.5, 19.5, and verse 9. You see, all of us have sinned. We all are liars by nature, and all of us deserve hell. See Psalms 116.11, Revelation 21.8. But Christ can forgive your sin and set you on the right path. If you haven't repented to Christ, I strongly encourage you, do it now. Now you might be thinking, Now, Brother Anthony, how are observing these holidays lying to children? I'm glad you asked that question, at least in your thoughts. Read these about not making children angry, offended, or discouraged. These scriptures prove that, clearly. Now, you and I both know that Satan Claus, they call him Santa Claus, but his real name is Satan Claus. We all know that this Satan Claus isn't real and doesn't exist, right? So if he isn't real, why are so many people asking the kids, What is Santa getting you for Christmas? Have you been good for Santa this year? Question for you. What influenced them to believe a lie? Isn't that the same as lying to their face? If you say no, then let me put it this way. Suppose I said to you, with this lottery ticket, you'll for sure win a million dollars. Just pay all your bills on time for the whole year and you'll get the million dollars. Now, I already know that won't happen. But I led you to believe that. So you pay all your bills on time, then the ticket finally arrives. You scratch the ticket, and it's a loser! What a shame. But then suppose I say to you, But hey, the important thing is, you learn good discipline to pay your bills when expected to. Now think about it. It's the exact same scenario. You tell your kids that if they're good little boys and girls, Santa will bring them gifts. Then they behave the best they can and can't wait to see what you promised. Then the time comes, and do they really want to see the gifts only? No, they also want to see Santa that you led them to believe in. Sure, you might get away with the lie for a few years, but one year, they somehow catch you at night putting the gifts under the, the tree. That pagan, graven image tree. And what do you know? No Santa in sight. Anywhere. Now how do you think that makes them feel? Lied to and devastated. And now you take them to church to learn about this historical Jesus? Now you want them to believe in this invisible man in the sky that will judge them one day. They will all stand before and give account to. Are you mad and crazy? And parents wonder why their kids turn away from God and become either atheists or agnostics. Why is that? Because you are a big, fat, lying, deceiving Judas. That's what you are. Conclusion for this first video. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 18.6, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a milestone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. So guess what? This is just one of the ways to offend them. Christ basically said that it were better for you to die than to offend them. It's up to you now. You saw the logical factual truth in this introduction video. Now what are you going to do about it? Repent, turn from your ways, and God will have mercy. Once again, see Isaiah 55, 7. Now Judas went and hanged himself after he betrayed the innocent blood. See Matthew 27, 3-5. If you reject this and continue in sin, you might as well do the same, because that's all you're worth, to kill yourself and be buried in six feet of dirt. That's all the honor and respect you will ever have. Do not lie to your children. God will not wink at that and overlook it. So brethren, now you know the flavor of this video series, refuting Christmas and exposing those who do, in hypocrisy, 
So brethren, brace yourself, because the rest of the videos in this series are going to be brutal with scriptural, honest, logical truth. Love the Lord Jesus Christ, fear God to keep His commandments, reject the pagan holidays, including Christmas, and read the King James Bible. Thanks.